Welcome to this little tutorial I wanted to share with you around the holiday season. It looks like a lot of equipment is out here on my desk, but this is actually a really simple little design. I have a two and a half inch cookie cutter here, but any size of a star shaped cookie cutter I think is easy to start with. I've got a mechanical pencil just so we can draw a little outline, but other than that, it's not needed for anything. And I've got a little ruler, again, just to give me a little guideline for my calligraphy that I'm going to add. I've got some watercolor here. You really only need two colors. So whatever you want for your green tone, whatever you want for your floral tone. I've got some water in my water dish, a couple of brushes. I've got a larger brush here for mixing with, and I've got two smaller pointed round brushes to get some of the fine details. I've got a mechanical eraser, which I'll use later on to erase the pencil lines. Got my pointed pen for my writing and my embellishing. I will probably use a Sakura Jelly Roll pen. The color is Clear Stardust and it really adds a sparkle. I've got my pastel palette here. So I've just used a little bit of chalk pastel to get a little bit of green and a little bit of pink onto this sandpaper block. And if I use the pastel, I usually apply it with a pastel applicator. This is a pan pastel soft applicator. Makeup uh, eyeshadow brush will do the same thing. A very fluffy Q-tip will also do the same thing. I have a china plate, which serves as my mixing palette. Um, I have a little bit of metallic schminka gold watercolor. So this is a really nice limited edition palette, but any gold ink or gold watercolor that you want to use at the end to add a little bit of a sparkle. Again, I may or may not use that. Um, I also have off to the side here, just a uh, kitchen towel or a uh, bar cloth that will clean up any little bits of watercolor. I can also um, adjust the flow of watercolor on my brush with this. It's um, more environmentally friendly than using a paper towel. Um, and I drop her with distilled water to reconstitute my gold gouache. And that's what you need to start with. And I'm just going to walk you through the steps. Okay, so I am ready to go here. And I'm just going to position my little cookie cutter on a piece of watercolor paper. This is 140 pound hot press watercolor paper, um, but you don't need anything that heavy. You could work with a 90 pound if you want, just whatever you have, even a cardstock will do this because um, we're really not going to use that much water. And I'm just going to go around the outer edge with my mechanical pencil and get a light outline of the star. See how I do. All right, good enough. So cookie cutter is now put aside and I'm just gonna eyeball in here a little bit of a baseline. And by eyeball, I'm just guessing at where center is because I can always flourish my way out of trouble here. So I've just indicated a little bit of a baseline I don't really need to put an X height. This is gonna be a little bit free flowing. So my pencil lines are ready. That's all I need to guide me. Now I'm using a pointed pen in a straight holder. I'm using a vintage Hunt 21, but whatever you like to use for a pointed pen, you just need a medium flexible point. Um, I have a larger mixing brush here. This is a synthetic mixing brush um, from Billy Shoal. Um, I need to get into my wells of my watercolor. So I'm just gonna get this out of harm's way. Pop this down. And I think I will do, um, this color here is brilliant purple. I'm gonna mix it a little bit with the ruby and get a really nice kind of a festive color going. So I'm gonna saturate my brush, wake up my brush a little bit and go into the wells. Look at just so pretty. It's such a pretty and a vibrant color, cheerful as soon as we put it onto the plate. And 
as a little tip for you, I think a china plate is one of the best palettes that you can use. And I usually work with a white one. Um, so you can see the, really see the mix. Now, this is gonna make some pretty water, rinse water. I'm gonna get a little bit of the ruby in there, brighten it up. Both of these are Schmincke colors, but you don't need to use what I use. Use what you have and just have fun with it. So I'm gonna mix this up a little bit thicker because I need to brush it onto the back of my pen point. So I don't want it too watery. You're looking for a consistency just slightly heavier than what you normally get with ink. And that should do. Let's get this out of the way. Pop this back. And I'm just going to write, you can do these as name cards if you want for your uh, holiday place settings. I'm just going to write the word hope. So I've just got my word written down and I will now transition to the brush. All right, so I've got my word down on the paper. I've got a little bit of the pink color mixed up for the flowers, but let's get a little bit of the green. Um, I know I've got some sap green here and I might kind of bring in more than one tone. One of the things that you can do when you're working with watercolor is if you don't like sort of the brightness and intensity that comes with paint right out of a tube, you can always start to add in a little bit of another color and don't be afraid of muddy mixes. The, the only way you can start to learn about what works and what doesn't work with watercolor is to play and it's okay to make mistakes. Just give this a go, but that's kind of, you know, a bright green on its own. One thing you can do with um, sap green like this is just bring over a little bit of that pink from your mix and it suddenly makes it less um, acidic. It makes it a little bit more natural, a little bit more like what you would see in nature. So that just tones it back a little bit. And again, I'll just pop it forward, make sure I've got a little enough for my, my project. All right, so colors are done. I am using a, um, this is a spotter brush. It's an Isabay Series 6229. The size is four and they come to a really nice point. Now mine has been very well used. Um, I do a lot of dry brush techniques, but you can see that it comes to a nice point. My bristles are about five millimeters long. You don't wanna use a big brush for this. You don't need a special triangle brush or any sort of specialty brush. See what you have, and as long as those bristles aren't really long, you should be able to do it here. All right, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this pink, and I'm gonna give you the, a really, really simple flower that can go into the corners of these points. So let's just start with a little bit of pigment, and I'm just making almost like these little C shapes and expanding them a bit. I'm constantly going to adjust how much water is in my brush with uh, that towel off to the side. And I'm starting to bring these C shapes around the center. So I'm expanding the size of my rose and I'm letting that pencil constrain my, I don't wanna be popping outside of that boundary. Let's do that again. So I'm going to bump another one beside it. Again, start with those little C shapes side by side, and then you start to expand around. And if they just look like little lines at this point, don't worry about it. We're going to add a little bit of water and soften things up. And if you want to add a little bit more of a dark tone toward the center, just go in there, add a bit more pigment. And with each 
arm of the star, I'm going to add this little cluster of three little roses. So you can see that I've sort of added these circular shapes around. They're sort of random and irregular, so don't think that they all have to be identical. No rose in nature is the same as the one growing beside it. Now I'm just taking a little bit of a damp brush and I'm kind of saturating things and adding just a little bit more water to give it a little bit of a softness. Again, I'm letting that barrier of the pencil constrain me into a shape. Okay, so first arm is done and then just repeat around to each arm. Okay, so I'm coming around to the end of all of these little roses. And if you want to intensify any of the darks, even if the paint has settled, you can either mix up a stronger, more deeper color here, or you can just sort of tap in a little bit more of that um, deeper pigment here. But the roses really need some white space. I think you can go, you can kind of just have blots of color if you completely saturate it and don't leave a little bit of white space in your, in your roses. But it's a very soft effect. And I think what I'm going to do is pop the idea of a rose just coming out from the word. And this will help balance that calligraphic work inside maybe get another one here it's not a full rose i'm doing i'm just doing sort of the impression of a side view maybe a third so the secret here is to play and give up control a little bit and just let the watercolor do its thing and see what you're left with so I've got lots of pink on the page. I'm gonna come in with a little bit of green and start to add the leaves. So I'm just gonna clean the brush, same brush. I'm just gonna pick up from my uh, palette a little bit of the green. And I can use the tip of the brush to come in and kind of get the idea of a stem and maybe a little bit of a branching that's happening here. I'm just gonna kind of grace it along the side of that H and down, get a couple of leaves. As you're giving the impression of the sepal of the rose, just dance with it a little bit. One of the, the real blessings of working with watercolor is the fact that you don't have complete control here. Watercolor has a mind of its own, and your job as the artist is to figure out <laughs> how to work with um, the watercolor. All right, cute. Now I'm going to come in with a couple of these little, I'm just sort of flattening the brush a little bit to create the idea of a leaf here and there. And you can get into some of these um, little gaps. Just going to, don't even stress here. We're just giving the impression of a little leaf, a little bit of sort of that rose leaf shape. I'm letting the brush and the watercolor do the work here. And again, give up that control. So one of the blessings um, that watercolor work brings to us in the calligraphy field, it's not as exacting. So our calligraphic work is also, is often quite demanding of us and making us seek these perfect letter forms where I look at watercolor as uh, it, it's sort of perfectly imperfect. It You work with it um, and you are not in complete control here. 
it's a blessing and just sort of embrace that. I know it can be a bit scary to think in those lines, especially when you're used to kind of the controlling absolutes of the calligraphic field. All right, so I've got some little strokes expanding here and there. I'm just gonna start to creep into the gaps. So I'm creeping into this white space that is kind of defined by the shape of the pencil here. And again, just little bits. Okay. So I think I have done enough brush work. I'm going to now go back to the pointed pen, get some of this green onto the back of my pen point. Again, this is going to be a little bit more watery than you're used to working with. Um, so it, it's going to be more fluid really than ink is. Okay, so I'm going to come along this line, my pointed pen. I'm going to start to etch in the impression of pine here and there, just some little strokes. I'm really just dancing along this line here. Very lightly etching in. Very loose pen strokes. Sort of filling in this gap. Okay. Yeah, what else can we do? I'm going to load up again. I'm coming in a little stronger with the pigment at this point. I'm going to do the, the little wheat stroke. And I'm, I'm just doing this little pressure and release stroke with the pointed pen. The tip of the pen is creating these precision marks. And let's just have a little bit of a dance around with these strokes. You can go over top of the pine. Creating a really whimsical star. Maybe even pressure and release stroke in there just to give a little bit more depth. What you're seeing emerge on the paper is very much a part of my process where I'm never 100% sure of what's going to happen. Um, I am a huge proponent of offhand flourishing. Not sure if I use that word correctly. I'm a, I'm a huge encourager of offhand flourishing. And I believe offhand flourishing unlocks a lot of skills. Um, the ability to sort of let things go in smoke and let things be, not always knowing what will happen is not is not something to run away from. It's something to embrace in this calligraphic world. I think a lot of my best work has come from things that I had no idea how they were gonna turn out. When I really have a clear, clear cut vision, I often disappoint myself because I can't quite get that vision onto the paper. So I think that offhand flourishing allows you to um, embrace the uncertainty of what will happen. And in that uncertainty, I know that you will surprise yourself with what you can do. Again, I'm just continuing along.
And if you notice these wheat strokes, these little uh, pointed pen marks are starting to close in the white space gap a little bit, tightening up the work a bit. All right, almost there. The other thing I hope this tutorial does for you is open up the world of watercolor as something that can flow very beautifully through the pointed pen. And you can add it to your toolbox so you don't have to always be reliant on ink and wish that there was an ink this color. You can mix any colors that you want with watercolor. All right, so I'm just gonna give this a minute to dry and then we'll finish it up. Okay, I am going to do the finishing touches. I'm going to wake up a little bit of this gold. Um, this is Schmincke gold gouache. Some of these are my own gouaches that are watercolors I put in here, but these are from the Schmincke limited edition. And you can see I love that color. Um, they call it yellow gold. So let's get some of there. I think they call it yellow gold. Maybe it's the antique gold. Um, and I'm just going to put a little bit of distilled water in there and let that soak in and soften. And while that is doing its work, I'm going to come in and just grab my pastel. Now everything has been has dried, so I'm not worried. And I'm just picking up a little bit of pastel. And I'm going to come in and put this little glow of pastel sort of going inside the star rather than outside because you want this shape of the star sort of restricted. If, if I go outside of this star shape with the pastel, you sort of lose this shape that we've crafted. But I think green, you know what, let's just come in with the tiniest little bit of pink. One of the things to keep in mind about pastel, if you ever think you've overdone it, you can always uh, get rid of it with a, a little bit of a kneaded eraser, but that just makes it a little bit happier, I think, coming in with a little bit of pink. And again, I wanna leave some white space. I don't want this to be completely covered in. Right there, I think I've uh, got a little bit too much of the pastel, so I've got a bit of a kneaded eraser. You can just see that you can lift it out. So don't be afraid. All right, that should be enough time for that gold to soften in the palette a little bit. Make sure my brush is clean of watercolor, and I'm going to just load my pointed pen. So I do lots of tests on that little piece of paper. Shake off the excess so you don't uh, blob on your paper. And I'm just going to do a couple of little pressure and release strokes to add a little bit of shimmer and sparkle. I'm going to come in and around those embellishments, around those stems of flowers. And you can see it just, I can see it glittering. I don't know how well the camera will pick all this up, but just the sort of the festive spirit comes through when you start to add all of this glitter and, and uh, sparkle. And you notice that it's not red and green. It's a really soft pink and green, but it's still very vibrant and very festive. Last thing we're gonna do, take a little bit of the Sakura Jelly Roll pen and I'm just gonna come in and I know from experience that this doesn't capture on the camera really well, but trust me, this will give some glitter and flair to your piece. So I'm just gonna shimmer this a little bit. Maybe that'll pick up on the camera, but my hope for you this December 2021 is that you'll find joy and peace in the pursuits that you have that you the the things that you do with your hand and I wish you all the best and I thank you for watching.